today we have an easy tutorial for you to show you some techniques that you can use on any bag. We've used a messenger bag with a nice flap and what we've done uh, firstly is we've customized the flap with a really fun applique. The other thing that we're going to show you how to do is create an adjustable strap for your bag which I find is always really handy. So before we get started I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel, uh, give us a comment uh, if you like the stuff that you're seeing. Um, I want to remind you that we're also on Instagram and Facebook with lots of great content there and of course if there's anything that you see that catches your eye in this video, we do have an online store at Fabricana.com as well. So let's get started. As I mentioned a moment ago, we won't be talking about every step in making a bag. This isn't a kind of a, you know, start to finish bag um, video. We are going to be focusing on a couple of techniques. Uh, we want to make a messenger bag with an adjustable strap, which is kind of a, an adaptation to the pattern that we're doing. And another thing that we're going to be doing is looking at some uh, vinyl applique that will make the bag a little bit more kind of us. Um, so you can adapt the bag to something that you like. Our applique is going to be kind of a fun little mushroom. I think it's a fun motif and it'll, I'll show you how we're going to use the stem of the mushroom as the closure for the bag. So let's talk about the pattern that we're going to be using. We're going to be using McCall's uh, 8298 and I have to say that this pattern is living its 90s grunge fantasy. There's all kinds of projects in here including a fun skirt that looks like a flannel shirt. There's a top that has kind of like tears in it that have been sewn up. Um, there's some fun little sleeve, uh, fingerless gloves. And of course, a couple of bags. We're going to be focusing on the Messenger Bag F that comes with a star applique that, as I mentioned before, we're going to be personalizing our applique to the little mushroom. So once you have your pattern, we can talk about other things that we're going to need, including our main fabric. So we've chosen a beautiful brush. It's really soft, um, kind of a denim twill fabric in this beautiful dove gray. Complements the blue mushroom really nicely we have um, that we're using for the appliques. Um, it's a vinyl fabric. Um, it's a lightweight upholstery fabric actually with a backing on it so it's nice and strong but not too stiff. We have this beautiful kind of um, sky blue and the same fabric in an off-white to make the stem and the dots on our mushroom. A couple of other things that we're going to need. Um, as I mentioned before we're doing an adjustable strap so we need a little bit of hardware including these sliders and the buckle so those are additions to what is required by the pattern um, I've got some thread to match the beautiful denim and of course we need other basic sewing items including scissors for paper scissors for fabric we've got interfacing for the bag because we want it to have a nice body um, some pins so just your general sewing notions so once you have those things ready we're gonna get started so before we can get started on the fun techniques of applying the applique and doing the adjustable strap, we, may, we need to make the basic bag. And to help this kind of go more smoothly, I've um, gone ahead of time and prepared um, cutting out all the pieces, cutting out the interfacing. I've applied the interfacing. Um, so I'm going to quickly just kind of put together the main part of the bag and the lining and the flap. And once I have those pieces put together, then we can move on to the more interesting techniques. So I'm back from the sewing machine. Um, I've just followed basically the pattern instructions in order to create the lined pouch of the bag. Um, it's that nice heavy fabric on the inside, so this is going to be a very durable bag. And then I've made the flap. It's a separate piece, again kind of self-lined. Um, I've done an edge stitch to make sure that it's all laying nice and flat and really tidy. Um, and now we're going to move on how to make our applique. Um, of course, um, looking at the flat pattern piece, there is a star applique that's included with the pattern, um, but we wanted to do something a little bit more unique, so we've made our little mushroom pattern. So in order to do that, or whatever applique you would like to make, it's a good idea to just trace out from the tissue um, the same pattern piece onto some craft paper. Um, now an important part of doing this is making sure that you know the area of the flap that you're actually allowed to use. And what I mean by that is, of course, the pattern piece includes a seam allowance. 
And then there's gonna be that bulky edge after it's sewn because you've got the seam allowances kind of inside the bag, which makes it a little bit bulkier. So it's a good idea to have your applique start a little bit in from the edge of the bag. The other thing to think about is the fact that the flap folds over the top of the bag. The flap covers the width of the bag, so there is a line indicated on the flap that indicates, so from this line down is actually the front of the bag. So you don't want your applique to bleed into the top because then you won't see it visually from the front of the bag. So those are just things to keep in mind when you're thinking about the size of your applique. So once you've transferred um, your pattern onto a piece of paper, um, you can indicate the seam allowance, which for us is 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters, and then go another seam allowance above that just to allow for the bulk of the seam once it's turned inside out. So we've got that second line that shows uh, where we're allowed to do our applique. Then I basically folded my pattern in half and I kind of freehand drew kind of the size of our mushroom cap and then the bottom of that will become the base, the bottom of the mushroom, and then kind of freehand, um, kind of looks a little bit like a light bulb, um, is going to be the um, stem of the mushroom. And what that is actually going to be is where the closure is to keep our bag closed. We're going to sew a little snap onto the stem and that's going to keep our bag closed. So you can just basically cut that pattern piece for the cap and the bottom and the stem, which gives us the cap the bottom and the stem and then I've also just basically freehand losing my glasses here freehand I've just drawn some circles which I'll draw in the contrast fabric to do some dots just to make our um, mushroom look a little bit more interesting a little bit more contrast so again um, I just want to actually quickly let you know that the height from the base of our mushroom to the top of the cap is about six and a half inches if you want to try and copy our pattern and then again uh, it goes from the center out to just about the edge we've got two seam allowances and then that is the edge of our mushroom so once we had our pattern pieces uh, ready then i was able to cut it out of the fabric so i've cut out the cap in our beautiful blue vinyl i've cut out the bottom of the mushroom um, so it's one piece of the cap one piece of the bottom in the white and then for the stem I've actually done two pieces because um, this will be kind of two-sided um, it'll make it a little bit stronger and we'll be able to sew our snap onto the back side that will be hidden that will be the closure of our flap uh, then I've uh, like I said just kind of rough cut um, in the off-white some dots for a mushroom which I've applied just with a single um, a straight stitch on the sewing machine very close to the edge. So now that we have all of our appliques prepared um, let's figure out our placement on the flap. So here is the bottom of the flap so I'm going to use some tailor's chalk and a ruler um, because we know that the base of our um, the bottom of the mushroom sits 5 eighths of an inch from the edge of our flap. So I'm just going to put my ruler along that edge, 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to use the chalk to just draw a straight line. And this chalk will wash out the side just to kind of center um, the mushroom across the width as well. 5 eighths of an inch from the side, centered inside of our chalk lines. And the bottom of the base of the mushroom is going to be resting on that straight line. Now one product I don't think I mentioned earlier that we're going to be using is a sewing and craft tape and what this is it's um it's like a, a, a tape that's adhesive it has a, a paper backing so you can uh, put it onto the back of the fabric then peel off the backing and then place the pieces where you want and that will hold them in place while you're sewing. Um, normally we would use pins for this, but unfortunately because of the fabric that we're using, which is a vinyl, if we stick pins through that, the holes are going to stay there. Once you've pierced vinyl, it stays pierced. So we don't want to do that, so that's why we're using this adhesive. So we're going to be applying this to the back of our appliques. 
So I think we're going to cut a strip across almost the full width of the bottom of the mushroom. I can feel it's nice and sticky. So I'm just going to apply that. I'm going to do the same thing for the cap. So with those two pieces set, we're ready to start doing some applique. We're going to stitch that on, so we're going to move over to the sewing machine. Now one thing I also want to mention, before we do that, um, we have to sew a, a cut a little slit into the base because our little um, stem is going to slide kind of inside the bottom of the mushroom. So just make sure before you um, stitch this down that you've sewn a little slash that's wide enough for your stem to sit inside. So just keep in mind that we've used vinyl, but you could use all kinds of different fabrics. Felt would be awesome, different cottons. Uh, just keep in mind with the vinyl, um, the raw edge doesn't fray. Um, so if you're doing cotton, maybe you wanna seal it with um, a heat uh, adhesive. We're actually gonna use um, kind of a decorative stitch on our machine, it's called the Crazy Patch Stitch. And you're gonna see um, the nice job that it does um, it gives a little bit more uh, bulk to the stitches because it goes over uh, more than once. We're just going to use the edge of our um, vinyl. The needle, when it goes down on the right, should go just to the edge of our fabric. I'm going to start stitching right at the center of the base of our mushroom because um, if there's any problem with the stopping and starting of our stitching, it's going to get covered by the little stem. Uh, the other thing is, uh, We've done a very large applique, so the curves were nice and easy. Um, it took a little bit of patience, but going around the curves wasn't that difficult. If you wanna get a little bit more finicky with smaller appliques, just keep in mind that you're gonna be doing sharper curves, so you just have to be very careful to go around those curves um, with the smaller appliques. So just so you know, we're continuing along the white. We're gonna do the blue in one go, but uh, right now we're just focusing on the white. So again, my needle is going right between where the white and the blue are. I just, it's a good time to mention, if you don't have the crazy patch stitch um, that looks like this on your machine, um, another really good option is to just do a straight stitch like we've done with our dots, or you could use a zigzag stitch, um, more of a satin stitch on your machine. So there are other options if you don't have this particular stitch. So as you can see, we've started on the blue. We started in the corner because that would be a good place to be able to stop and start. We're going to continue all the way around the top edge. And then we're going to continue along the edge of our white to back to where we started. What this stitch looks like, you can see it's kind of going back a couple of times, so it's really giving a lot of thread there, and it's really giving this cute kind of crafty, uh, quilterly stitch. It takes a little bit of time, um, so be patient, but I think the overall effect is really sweet. Um, if you are interested in doing a blanket stitch by hand, uh, we are going to have a link uh, to show the video on how to do that. Um, it can be a little bit more decorative than the straight stitch, so it's something that you really might want to give a try. And then we're going to go back and pull all of our threads through to the back, tie them off, trim them close, and then we're ready to work on the stem. So as I mentioned, with the appliques um, done, we're ready to move on to the stem. And of course, as I mentioned before, we've hand sewed on this large snap onto the back side of the stem because that's going to keep our bag closed. So we've got the two pieces. We've got them wrong sides together. We're going to sew them together from the top side. This is the stitching that's going to show, so we want to make sure that we're stitching from the front. I'm going to set my machine back to a straight stitch, so this is going to mimic more the stitching that we have on the dots. And we're just going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance with a straight stitch. Um, take your time, but we're just keeping those raw edges together um, from the front and back of the stem. It's a little bit finicky because again, we can't apply pins. So I'm just pinching the two layers together to keep them in line. So one thing I'll mention is we've definitely put the, scent, the snap right in the center of the kind of roundness of the stem. So that'll be nice and centered uh, on the bag. And it also means that we don't have to stitch over it. We've got a nice um, edge where it's free of the snap. There we go. So we have our stem. And that's ready. We don't have to worry about this top edge because that's going to get inserted underneath the base of the uh, cap. 
So we had a bit of an issue with ours. It kind of twisted a little bit when we were sewing. So I've just gone quickly over to the iron. Now, because this is vinyl, I was very careful to use a press cloth and the iron wasn't too hot and I was just able to flatten it out a little bit. So uh, just even an experienced sewer like me runs into difficulties too. So if that happens to you, um, a low temperature iron uh, with a drop cloth will help flatten the piece out a little bit. Actually, it's kind of extending a little bit further than I would like. So I'm just going to trim off the top of the stem a little bit. Now we're ready to apply our stem. We had the little slit that I mentioned before that the stem is going to be inserted into. We're going to put that in as far as we can. And now we're ready to go to the sewing machine. We're going to do the same decorative stitch just to apply the stem uh, in place. So we're going to pull this, cut the threads and pull the threads to the back of the flap and tie them off. All right. So here we have our finished flap. I can't help myself. I just need to see how it looks with the bag. This is gonna be so cute. So have we learned how to do vinyl applique? Yes, we have. Everyone give yourselves a round of applause. We're ready to move on to the next technique and that is gonna be the adjustable strap. The pattern that we've been using has a fixed strap where the strap is made and just stitched to the side of the bag but it can't be adjusted. We want to do an adjustable strap. So I've taken the pattern piece for the strap, which is basically three and a quarter inches wide by whatever length this is. And I've made it quite a bit longer in order to do an adjustable strap. The strap has to go a full depth and then come back on itself where the um, buckle is. So let's just see. I probably should have measured this ahead of time but our piece is three and a quarter inches by about 40. So just that'll give us a little bit of extra in order to make the strap adjustable. I've taken one of the pieces and I've applied fusible interfacing to it. And I've just left the other one with uh, just as it is. So I'll show you how to stitch the strap. Another thing that I've done that we're gonna need because this is an adjustable strap is we're gonna need um, essentially straps on the side of the bag that hold the sliders. So I've really overdone what I need, but I basically cut a couple more strips. Um, I've got 24 inches by three and a quarter here, um, two of those, plus um, interfacing cut the same size. I'll apply interfacing to one of those and I'll create basically another strap um, that will get cut down to use to hold the sliders on the side of the bag. But let's just focus on the long strap for now. So we've taken our two nice long strap pieces. I've got one again that's not interfaced and the other one is interfaced with the fusible interfacing. So starting at one end, and you can put pins in if you'd like, uh, just to hold everything in place. Um, we're going to start sewing with a straight stitch and a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. We're going to back stitch. I've got my walking foot on, so I'm confident without any pins, but if you like pins, please do so. We're going to back stitch. And now I've got um, the little pieces that were going to be used on the side of the bag to hold the slider. Again, we've got our interfacing. Make sure that you've got your two right sides together. Um, because this is going to get turned inside out, so those right sides will come to the other side. We're just going to continue sewing just to make it a little easier. Back stitch when we start. We're going to back stitch at the end. I'm just going to turn my work around and I'm going to go along the other long edge with raw edge uh, with the exact same stitch, 5 eighths of an inch, starting with the back stitch. So it's exactly a repeat of what we just did. So once we finish sewing the other edge, we want to make sure all of our seams are nice and flat. So we're going to grade our seam allowances. Now, if you're not familiar with grading seam allowances, that means that we take one of the seam allowances and we're going to use the bulky one with the interfacing. We're going to trim that a little bit closer to our stitching. So you don't need to watch me do this, but I'm basically just using a nice sharp pair of scissors and I'm trimming away 
part of that seam allowance so that when it gets turned inside, we don't have so much bulk on the inside of our strap. So we need to basically turn this piece inside out. Um, I'm gonna use a butter knife to do that because it's nice and strong and it slides through easily. Maybe you have a chopstick or maybe you actually have a proper loop turner. Um, anyway, this is what I have right now. So we basically kind of want to create a pocket um, to let the knife sit in. And then we're going to use the end of the knife to force the fabric kind of inside of itself. And we're going to be able to work the knife through the whole thing and then turn the whole uh, strap inside out. So it's a little bit tough to get it started, but once we do, it'll be much easier. So see now that the knife is kind of holding that little pocket in place, and the strap is turning in on itself. Turn it all the way around. So now that we have the whole thing turned, I'm going to bring this over to the iron and I'm going to press it nice and flat, roll out those, um, those edges so that our strap is nice and flat, and then we're going to come back to the sewing machine and do some top stitching. All right, so we've taken our strips to the iron, we've pressed them nice and flat, rolled out those seams, now we're going to do an edge stitch close to that seam. I'm going to turn the work around and do the other edge. So the edge stitching is done. We can start working on how to apply the buckles and the sliders to the straps and the bag. So now that we've stitched and top stitched our long strap and the shorter strap that we're gonna use for the side pieces, let's cut the sizes that we need for the pieces on the side. I've decided, calculated, that we need six inch strips. So I'm just gonna measure over six inches I'm going to use a rotary cutter, but you could also mark it with chalk or a marking pencil and cut it with scissors. There's the second piece. So I'm just going to set those aside. I've got my long strap and I've got my buckle. I'm just going to pin the buckle to the end of the strap. So I'm going to weave it through one side and then back through the other. So our straps are raw edges, so we want to hide those raw edges. So we're gonna fold under that raw edge. Now the tricky part here is, we're gonna be machine sewing this. So we need to be able to get, um, we need to be able to stitch in this area without catching the buckle. Like the buckle will not go under the presser foot. So give yourself, you know, an inch and a half or so from where you're gonna be sewing, um, just so it's much easier to do. We folded it under about a half inch. So I've got about two inches from that folded edge to where the buckle is. And I'm going to pin that in place and then we'll be able to take that to the sewing machine. And I'll show you how to do that stitching. So once we have the buckle pinned to the strap, another little thing we can do to prepare is to mark our uh, guideline on the side of our bag where the straps are gonna sit on the side. So on the side of the bag, I'm going to take a ruler and I'm just going to measure two and a half inches from the top of the bag. Maybe hard to see. I'm going to use some chalk. And just so you can see, we've indicated a marking line just for us, uh, two and a half inches from the edge of the bag. And I'm cheated. I've already done that on the other side. So we're ready to place the straps on the side of the bag as well. So we've got our buckle that we want to stitch in place. Now we are stitching through quite a few layers, so you probably want to take it a little bit slowly as you go. And basically we want to make sure that we are um, basically encompassing kind of that raw edge so that we never see it. So I'm going to kind of start stitching kind of in the center of that folded edge. We're basically going to sew a box around. I think for a little bit of added strength, we'll also sew a little cross across the box just to give it lots of strength. If you're ever carrying anything heavy in your bag, you want to make sure it's not going to come apart. 
and we're sewing about an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge. I'm gonna wheel the last couple of stitches and we're sewing past that raw edge, again with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance uh, from the edge. I'm gonna go back to where we started. I'm gonna stitch right over those original stitches to the corner so we can make our little X. One last pivot, we're gonna stitch back to where we started and end with a back stitch. So now we're ready to apply our little six inch straps to the sides of the bag. I've turned the bag uh, inside out, so right now I have the lining facing out. So our markings that I made are on the inside of the bag currently. Now what those markings we're gonna use them for is to line up the raw edge of our strap. We're gonna center that kind of on the center of the side of the bag. And then we're gonna sew about three eighths of an inch from that, um, that raw edge. So that's about the edge of my presser foot. So you can use the edge of your presser foot as a guide while we stitch that in place. I'm gonna repeat that process for the other side and then I'll be able to show you how to apply the slider to these straps. So we have one of our sliders here. Uh, we need to put the slider on the strap first before we close that loop. So let's do that. And then basically what we wanna do is we wanna bring this raw edge in a loop and butt it up right against the other raw edge that we have. And then we're gonna stitch a box over top of those that's going to um, secure all of those raw edges inside. So as you can see what I've done, I'm basically just kind of folding over the strap towards the top of the bag. And I'm using that stitching line that we, where we just sewed the strap on kind of as a guide for where the strap is getting folded. I'm bringing those raw edges together on the underside and then I'm going to stitch a box on top of those raw edges, kind of encompassing them inside. We're going to mimic the stitching that we just did on the long strap here, so a nice box with an X through it so there will be like consistency through our project. So we have the buckle attached to our long strap. We have the sliders attached to um, our bag. One thing I wanna mention before I attach the strap to the bag is where you want the buckle to sit when you're wearing your bag. I know for me, I'm a little bit sensitive to having things rub on my chest. So I wanna have the buckle kind of resting more on my back when I'm wearing the bag and I'll wear my bag on my left arm. So if this is the front of the bag, that's the back of the bag, I'm going to weave through the strap on this slider first. So if you're like me and sensitive about things uh, rubbing on your chest and you wear your bag on your right hand side, you're gonna weave the, um, the strap through the other side. Now the other thing is, when we weave this through, we kind of want to cover this bulky section of the strap. So we're going to have, if we have that kind of facing up right now, and if I slide the strap through the slider here, we come back towards the buckle. And then when we put the strap through the part of the buckle that's closer to me. The strap is hiding all of that bulk, which makes it nice and smooth against the body. And then once we have it through the first part of the buckle, then we have to weave the strap through the second part of the buckle that was a little bit further from me. And that is how we end up with an adjustable strap because now we can simply slide 
the strap through a little bit further and that will lengthen or shorten the amount of strap that you want. So once you've got the strap applied to one side, we want to weave the strap through the other side. Let's kind of take a look at it from this end. Now, if we wove it through this way, we'd end up with that bulky section showing. So we want to weave it kind of from the underside because we're just going to basically, basically be stitching the strap closed here. We obviously don't want that raw edge, so like we did with the other straps, we'll be folding under the raw edge. We're leaving ourselves about two inches or so from the slider so that we can kind of get in there with our sewing machine. I'm going to pin that in place and then I'm just going to quickly go to the sewing machine and stitch that down. So we applied the strap to our bag. Um, I've also, just to show you um, a more finished product, I've taken the flap and I've followed the pattern's instructions to sew it onto the back of the bag. Basically, if you're not working with a pattern, um, the whole flap was a finished edge, so we just apply it to the back of the bag. It's kind of set in a little bit from the top, and then we simply top stitch it in place. Now keep in mind, um, like I said before, I wear the bag on my left side, so I've got the buckle on the back, and so that means that this is the back side of the bag, so that's where I've applied the strap. The last thing that we need to do is hand sew the snap on, and then I can show you the finished bag. Another thing I wanna mention, um, I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier, is the strap that we cut was 39 inches, and you can kind of see, um, gauge where the bag sits. Um, for me, with a 39 inch strap, so if you want it to sit a little bit lower, you can figure out how many more inches you want to add to the length of the strap to have it sit where you want it. But of course, it can always be adjusted a little bit shorter as well. So I'll just get that snap stitched on and then we can see the finished bag. So here we have the finished bag. I've sewn on the snap so it's staying closed. I really have to say that I love this project. If you love it too, please let us know. Um, you can like this video or share it. Um, if there's other content that you would love to see on our channel, please let us know in the comments. We always love to hear from you. Um, you can also subscribe to this channel um, and also turn on the notifications so you don't miss any new content. We're of course on Facebook and Instagram as well where there's always lots of varied content there. We also have an online store, so if you're looking for some of the materials used in this video, including this awesome Daytona vinyl, you can find it there. And don't forget, um, always sew true and be you.